Good morning. So this is the second episode of a four-part series. I'm teaching you how to possess God-like power to manufacture more time, seemingly out of thin air. If you have yet to see the first episode, please pause this one right now and go watch that one first. There should be a link to it below. To illustrate the second way to manufacture more time, let me tell you about a friend of mine, Dave. Dave is in the real estate business, but it doesn't matter what business that you're in, or even if you are a business owner or an employee as you follow this story. The key principles and takeaways are precisely the same. So I will use my conversation with Dave to illustrate your key takeaways. Dave and I met at one of my favorite places here in Cardiff by the sea called Kai's. It is a great healthy food spot with an epic ocean view. We ordered our lunch at the counter and then walked upstairs to the tables with the whitewater ocean vista views and the sweet smell of the Pacific Ocean pouring through the windows. We found the best table in the joint and sat down, placing our food order number stand in the middle of the table. That's when I asked, so how you been? Crazy busy, he replied. Doing what? I asked. Everything, he responded. What does everything mean, I asked. And that is when he went down his laundry list. He said, well, last night I was up to 1.30 in the morning trying to finish up a direct mail piece that had to go out this morning. It was already two weeks late. I had to interrupt him and I asked, what, you mean you were literally stuffing envelopes yourself at 1 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, it was the only way I knew for certain that we were gonna get it done and get it done right, he said in a much too crabby tone. Sensing he really didn't know how nuts it sounded, I asked him to continue. And he said, and I had to get up extra early to set up the files for a new escrow that I got yesterday. And that was before sitting at FedEx office at 6 a.m. this morning, printing the flyers for a broker tour that I'm ho holding open later today. Oh, and get this, he pulled out of his journal three sheets of paper. This is the sign-in sheet from the open house that I did on Sunday. These are all leads that I have to enter into my database to follow up on, and it's now Wednesday. So these are probably already dead. I could see the stress all over his face. I asked, probably sounding too incredulous, you enter all those names, phone, and email addresses into your database yourself? Yes, he said, probably too loud. I looked around, hoping nobody was glaring at us. The last time I had somebody else do it, they totally screwed it up, he said, and it doesn't really take me that long. I just have to get at it. I could see that he really didn't know how insane he was sounding. I knew I had to have him hear it for himself. So I asked him, hey, how are your date nights going? Last time we talked, you were gonna go on a date night once per week after getting a babysitter, just the two of you. Ah, uh, yeah, well, that hasn't happened in three months, he replied. Ouch, I said. Well, how about that half marathon you said you were gonna do? How's the training going? Already knowing what the answer was going to be. Well, he started, let's just say I bought a great pair of running shoes, but they never have been out of the box. I'm just too busy, he exclaimed, trying to defend himself. My business is growing, which is exciting, but it's definitely been all consuming, he said. One final twist of the knife from me, just to be sure I had his attention. What about a vacation? Got anything fun planned on the horizon? What? He said this time, definitely way too loud. I can't even think of taking time off. I'm barely keeping up as it is. And just one more twist. Well, how does your wife feel about all this? I asked. Yeah, she's really PO'd at me, Dave said, and she finally got fed up. She and the kids are going to Florida next month to visit her mom and to go to Disney World without me. Ouch, I said again, then testing to see, even if he wanted my advice, I asked, hey, if you're willing to play along with something, I think I might be able to offer a suggestion or two. You up for it? Sure, he said <laughs> cautiously. Slide your journal over to me and I'll, I'll write it in there, I said. So, what's your revenue goal per month? He proudly exclaimed, I'm shooting for a million dollars this year and I'm right on track. I said, not helping myself. Great, well, let's cut that in half due to the divorce and the other half can fund your funeral. What, he said, at the rate you're going, buddy, you'll soon be divorced and dead, but let's never mind that for now. I asked, okay, for easy math, let's assume that after you pay your broker split, your office fees, your board fees, advertising and marketing costs, car, gas, all expenses to operate your business to generate that million dollars in gross revenue, let's say generously that you walk away with a half a million dollars EBITDA, meaning pre-tax uh, profit. Fair enough? He agreed. Okay, that means if you take 500,000 and divide it by the number of hours you are supposed to be working, not your current path headed towards divorce court, your son on the psychiatry couch and your daughter on the pole and you dead of a heart attack, that number is supposed to be 2,000. 
you have 2,000 working hours per year to invest in order to generate that million dollars in revenue, in order to take home that half a million dollars pre-Uncle Sam's cut. Are you with me here? I asked. He nodded. That means 500,000 divided by 2,000 equals $250 per hour. Your time is worth, your time has to be worth $250 per hour, every hour, hour after hour, eight hours a day, every work day. Every hour, you have to be doing something that somebody would pay you $250 an hour to do, something you'd pay somebody $250 an hour to do. Are you with me? Every hour you don't, you are literally losing money and going backwards on your goal. I could tell this kind of blew his mind. So I said, look, it's simple math. The only way that you can generate a million dollars in revenue so that you can earn 500,000 is by spending each of those 2,000 hours on something worth $250 an hour and or creating a system that generates a value of $250 an hour. His head nodded, indicating that he was getting it. So I continued. Right now, your only system quote unquote, is you. And you are doing a lot of work that is not worth $250 an hour. This means that you are trying to make up for it by robbing time and energy from your other life priorities, from your health. You're robbing it from your family and your kids, your friends, and even your faith. You might think your business is successful because it's generating income, but on the life wheel, buddy, you are failing and big time. You have a wheel with one spoke, financial at the cost of all the other spokes. And that's not a wheel, that's a pogo stick. And it's no wonder why you're exhausted. And like anybody on a pogo stick, I continued, it's not a matter of if you're gonna fall, just when and how much it's gonna hurt. Let me ask you this. Would you pay somebody $250 an hour to stuff direct mail letters? Would you pay somebody $250 an hour to prepare and print flyers or put uh, input names and contact information into your database? Would you even pay somebody $250 an hour to sit in a broker's open, drop papers off at the title company, or refill flyers at your listings? He said, heck no. I smiled, knowing that I had him in check. Well, you are, buddy. When you do it, that's exactly how much it's costing you. We just did the math. You have a $250 an hour person stuffing your envelopes, doing data entry, and playing messenger service. Do you get that? He nodded sheeplessly. Look, if you paid somebody $25 an hour to do it, you'd still make the $225 an hour difference between your $250 an hour wage and their $25 an hour expense by not doing it yourself. Now, for checkmate, I asked, do you like stuffing envelopes or doing data entry or standing in a FedEx office at six o'clock in the morning? Is that what you love about your business? Things that you do for fun as a hobby or for zero pay? Heck no, he said this time more aggro. I hate those things. It's why I was going to leave this business entirely. I hate dealing with the million never ending pesky details. It's drudgery to me, but somebody has to do them. He said, trying to still defend himself. Yeah, you're right. Somebody has to do them, but not you, I replied. You're too expensive. You are the rainmaker. Your time has to be spent on more valuable functions, specifically $250 an hour functions in order to hit your goal. Now, my Darren Daily friends, I know that you have heard the principle of calculating your time value, but I ask you, are you abiding by it? I guarantee you, 99 plus percent of you are not. I see it all too often. People saying yes to calls, yes to meetings, yes to interviews, yes to projects, yes to tasks that are within their 2000 hours, but far below their time value. And then wonder why they're not making progress on the goals they seek, even though they're working long and hard. I'll tell you how I sorted all this out for Dave in our next session. For now, I wanna pause and I wanna have you, A, once again, do the math on what your time value is supposed to be hourly based on your income goal, and B, have you identify all the activities that you're engaged in throughout your day and week that are well below the time value per hour. You don't have to do anything about it yet. We'll get to that in the next session. And share your answers to A and B in the comments below, and I'll see you back for our next episode.